Hey everyone, it's Shelby. I'm gonna give you guys a freezer tour. <laughs> but before I do that, I wanna talk about our solar system because I know that I'm gonna get a lot of comments um, and I just wanna like explain it so that maybe I can answer your questions before you, you have the comments because they're pretty common. We have a 25 kilowatt net metering solar system. And what that means is we have 25 kilowatts worth of panels on our roof and we're tied to the grid via our electric company and we have a net metering contract. It's kind of like the old cell phones when they first came out, you know, your minutes could roll over and then at the end of the year, they kind of figured it out. Well, it's kind of like that. It, a net metering contract is done on an annual basis. So at the end of a year, they look and see how much energy you produced and how much energy you used. Currently, we are using about a third of the energy we produce. So we sell two thirds of our energy to the electric company. So at the end of the year, we don't have an electrical bill. We actually get paid by the electrical company for the energy that we produced, okay? Now, the other part of our solar is an off-grid component. It's about seven kilowatts. We have a 400 amp service to our home, which is unusual, and a 200 amp panel to our residents. So we are backing up on our off-grid about 200 amps, which is, is basically like a whole house being backed up by batteries. And when we have a grid down situation, they have electrical switch that is capable of not only utilizing the seven kilowatts to charge the batteries, but it allows the system to pull the 25 kilowatts over to the off grid side, which is phenomenal. That gives you 32 kilowatts. And like I said, we don't even use a third of the 25 kilowatts. So we'll have like more energy than we can um, utilize you know, our whole house is going to be backed up and we'll be producing more energy than we can even use in that situation. But say that, you know, the grid's down, we're in the middle of a hundred year snowstorm and our panels are all covered in snow. We're not really producing too much energy. Well, we have a backup to that and that's the Generac generator. And the way we have it set up is if the batteries get depleted to a certain point, then the Generac uh, generator will kick on, charge the batteries, and turn off. It's very efficient. Most um, whole home generators uh, in a grid down situation turn on 24 seven. They run constantly. And we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to be very efficient with the fuel that it takes to run a generator. So that's why we set it up this way. Um, so in a grid down situation, we have, in summary, the seven kilowatts coming into the off grid, 25 kilowatts being transferred over via that switch to the off-grid uh, system to charge the batteries, which is 200 amps, which supplies electricity to our house. And in the worst case scenario, if our panels are covered in snow, we have the generator to back it up. It'll just kick on and kick off. And we have about 2,500 um, gallons of propane as a backup. So we could go a year. <laughs> probably with uh, the system that we have set up. Now, um, the system, and I don't completely understand this myself, the system has to have this constant electrical load to be able to do all this stuff and work properly. And that's where the electrical engineers calculated out a electrical load and that equated to seven um, freezers. So when we were designing this system, Ken and I thought that maybe we would do like a big walk-in freezer. And every company that we consulted discouraged us from that. They said, You're not, it's not a matter of you not having power to your freezers. It's like if your freezer broke down. So if you have one big freezer and it breaks down, you lose everything. So what they all recommended was for us to do the smaller freezers, like in tandem, to put that load on the system. And that way, if one of the freezers generator 
broke or whatever, you know, we would be able to switch stuff from that freezer to the other freezer to not lose, you know, our food. And so, you know, it, once they pointed that out, it, it kind of made sense. So that's how we ended up with seven freezers. <laughs> so that's the story. <laughs> um, now, it, this is like a completely different lifestyle for us. We lived in Southern California where you went grocery shopping every other day. There's a Sprouts, there's a Trader Joe's, there's, you know, farmer's market. I mean, anything that you could think of within five minutes of your house. And here it's a little different. You know, we live an hour and a half from Sam's Club. That's a three hour round trip in rain, sleet or snow that could easily double. Uh, Costco's about two hours away, so that's even longer distance. So that's one of the reasons why we stock up. Um, you know, I don't want to be out on the roads driving like that to go to the grocery store. I don't even like grocery shopping, um, generally speaking. I like to go to the, like the specialty stores and look at little or, uh, spices and different flavor profiles and different things that I've never used before. But as far as like the mundane everyday grocery shopping, I really don't like to do it. So this lifestyle here, living in four seasons and having the snow load that we do, I think we get about, I think it's 97 inches of snow, pretty much every year. Uh, having these freezers has just been a godsend. And the one thing that has come out of it is we've been able to order meat like by a, like a whole cow. Like we paid, I think it was $3 and some, uh, some change for our beef cow. We uh, didn't order it through a company. We went right to the farmer. So we saved about 40% doing that on top of, you know, ordering a whole cow. So we got a killer deal. Saved so much money by ordering a whole cow and two pigs directly from the, the farmer. Um, cut out the middleman altogether. So it's been a godsend for our family in the sense that we've been able to purchase meat in this manner because it saves so much money. I mean, the prices that I went to the grocery store the other day, I went to go pick up a head of cabbage. That's what it was. And they had strawberries, a package like this big. I don't know, $8.99. I almost died. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was like looking at the prices and I was like, wow, the prices have gone up. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but meat prices, produce prices, everything's gone up crazy. So we feel very, very, very blessed to have our solar system um, and then to have the freezers the, the way that we do because it's helped our family so much, you know. Um, a lot of times I think, you know, people think nothing of, you know, putting a big pool and jacuzzi and spend a ton of money on their backyard and that's fine or buy a couple new cars you know they don't bat an eye at that ken and i chose to put our money into the infrastructure you know so we don't have an electric bill in fact the money that we make off the electrical um, energy that we sell to the the company it pays for our propane it pays for our wood it pays for our fees to take a uh, trash to the dump it pays for all of our salt for our um, water softener, all of the filters and stuff for the water purification system. It's pretty much zeroed out all of our utilities as far as the cost on an annual basis. And we also have the peace of mind that we're not gonna be without power in a terrible storm. Um, and that the food that we have in our freezers is gonna be protected by uh, the way that the system is set up, having the batteries, and then having the generator. So I hope that answers some of the questions I know that would probably come up. And yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to, how, how many minutes? Oh my gosh, almost nine minutes to explain all that. Um, but now let's get to the, the freezer tour. Okay, the fun stuff. <laughs> Here is our electrical wall with the solar um, kind of goes around there. We have a 400 amp service, which is unusual for residential. Uh, that was the first thing we did when we 
started our solars, we put a 400 amp service in, and then the house has a 200 amp sub panel. Um, and then this is kind of just all the <laughs> electrical stuff. Ken's been putting in a, a 50 amp for the RV, so he has the cover off of that temporarily. And this is just all of the stuff, <laughs> the solar stuff. These are our battery banks here. So basically we have a on-grid system and an off-grid system and we somehow all this stuff connects the two together. <laughs> Beyond my pay grade, okay? <laughs> this is our generator, it's a Generac. Uh, the Echo Gen is really built for like off-grid, it's built to come on, come off, come on, come off, that type of thing. And um, it does a self-check every Sunday, and it'll come on if the batteries get to a certain level, just automatically. And it turns off automatically too. Once the batteries get charged, it'll just turn off. I forgot one thing, <laughs> Ken just reminded me. We have EMP Shield, it's like a, a surge protector for your solar system. And we have it on seven of the critical components. So like if we have, a direct uh, hit like a lightning strike to our barn the the switch is so quick it'll absorb that energy and it won't damage the critical components to our system and we looked into this because we were sitting on the porch if you guys could have had a film on on us that day it would have been hilarious we were sitting on the front porch and we were, a, a storm came in and then all of a sudden it started lightning and thunder, like on the street, 500 feet from the house, lightning struck. And it was scary to be that close to lightning. And it was like, we were like both looked at each other, like we need to get like the EMP shield on the, on the solar. And we did it the very next week. But anyway, um, I know there's a gentleman that watches my channel and he's really interested in the solar part. And I just wanted to say, yeah, we did get the EMP shields. <laughs> All right, let's get to the freezer tour, you guys. We have seven 22 cubic freezers that act as a load on our solar system. It's a necessity uh, to have this type of permanent load to make it work properly. So we have the freezers. I just organize them by the type of meat. I have two freezers dedicated to beef. We purchase a whole cow and then it'll last us a good year. So that's the first freezer beef. And I keep an inventory. So whenever I take anything out, um, I just mark it off. So I meal plan from here. We have all kinds of roasts and steaks and uh, that kind of thing, carne asada. That's the one thing I buy in addition to the whole cow. So I got two freezers of beef. Another thing that I wanted to just mention, because I get asked this a lot in the comments, I put all of our meat like in the food saver bags. It keeps the meat five times longer and prevents it from having like freezer burn. So I always get asked that question. I just wanted to mention that. This is the poultry freezer. In here I have some turkey breasts, whole chickens, butter, uh, chicken quarters, one whole turkey. And then one of the things I like to do is to marinate chicken breast cutlets in marinade and then stack them in here. This one's teriyaki. I have like chicken shawarma. I have Thai coconut marinade. I have tequila lime chicken. I have a bunch of different marinades that I make homemade, and I like to do that. And then down there is just some like chicken cutlets, chicken tenders, that kind of thing. And then I just have some pumpkin and our blueberries and acai packets. Uh, I have a couple of Cornish game hens. I need to get a few more of those. Then I have two freezers for pork. We order two um, whole pigs, and it's just, there's everything in here. Pork butt, the roasts, um, 
uh, just all the pork tenderloin, sausage, bacon, pork chops. There's some butter there, that type of thing. And then over here is the second uh, pork freezer. We have a lot more bacon in here. I buy the big pepperoni packets from Sam's Club because we make homemade pizzas and it's just Italian sausage, uh, ribs, there's Canadian bacon there. It's just all the different cuts. And then over here I have lamb and some duck. I also store shredded cheese in the freezer. It stores well. Uh, mostly sh uh, cheddar and mozzarella for making pizzas. And then I think that's a Mexican blend. But I have leg of lamb, boneless leg of lamb, lamb chops. And then I have uh, duck breast, duck confit, duck fat, and then orange juices. And that's our freezer here. This freezer is just kind of miscellaneous. I have all of our nuts down here, butter, uh, Parmesan cheese. This shelf here, I'm gonna do some more compound butters. I have some compound butters here and some uh, spaghetti sauce that I froze. Uh, there's a little bit of mozzarella cheese there. And then over here is some uh, concentrated beef uh, broth, some uh, yeast. And then just some different kinds of jellies down there. There's some crab apple jelly, some compound butters, maple butter, a few little things like that, phyllo, dough, that kind of thing. Just kind of a miscellaneous freezer. We added these two. We got uh, this at from CVS. They were putting new ones in. We got them for like 900 bucks. So Ken has his little man cave freezer. I have my cheese here. I usually have it in the house. Um, uh, I have a refrigerator drawer that I keep cheese in. So that usually is in the house. And then I'm utilizing this freezer right now. You guys saw this in my grocery haul. I went ahead and did it. It's mainly fish, fruit, vegetables, and a little bit of fast food kind of stuff. The uh, Trader Joe's stuff that our kids like. And uh, basically that's it. I do have some... Uh, lemon juice that I froze. Uh, there's some dill butter up there, some uh, meats for charcuterie tray, hot dogs, some apple cider, but pretty much it's what was in the uh, grocery haul video. Well, that's our freezer tour video, you guys. I do intend on getting some of those little individual size homemade uh, pizzas in there, and I wanna get some uh, homemade tamales uh, put up in the freezer. I just gotta get some time to do that. I need to get through the garden, get the canning done, and then I can focus on the freezer. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.